Hey, what's up people? I'm back with another video. So in this video, I'll be talking about the anti filters from Telesyn. So these filters can be used on to GoPro Hero 12, 11, 10 and as well as 9. Um, basically, I'll be talking about what are anti filters, what is its purpose and the most important thing about how to add a cinematic touch to your GoPro footage. And at the last of the video, I'll be giving you one small tip so that you'll be able to choose the right anti filters for the right environmental conditions. So stay tuned till the last of this video. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. So let's get on to the video. I've already unboxed this. So out of this box, we'll be getting these four filters, CPL, ND8, ND16, and ND32. Uh, we we'll look into each of these filters one by one. I'll be comparing the footage side by side with the different ND filters on so that you'll be able to make out the clear difference between these ND filters. So what is an ND filter and what are its purpose? ND filter or a neutral density filter adds like a sunglasses to your camera lens. So what does a sunglass do? It will actually protect our eyes from the bright environment, right? These ND filters also does the same thing. So this will actually reduce the amount of light entering into the camera. So I'll give you a scenario when we require these ND filters. Suppose if you want to add a cinematic touch or a motion blur into your footage, we'll be reducing the shutter speed, right? So reducing this shutter speed actually overexposes the footage. To overcome this problem, we'll be using these ND filters. That is when these ND filters comes in handy. That is about the basic information about the ND filters. So let's get on to the settings uh, that is required to add a cinematic touch in the GoPro. We are on to the GoPro uh, settings screen. Only things that we need to uh, make the changes is and the ISO and the shutter speed. So ISO minimum should be set to 100 and the maximum should be set to 800 and the shutter speed should be double of your FPS. right? Uh, what I meant by that is, suppose if you are recording footage at 24 fps, then your shutter speed should be at 1 over 48 or if you are shooting a video at 60 fps, then your shutter speed should be at 1 over 120. So that is a double of your fps, right? So that's all the magic that is required to add a cinematic touch. Now let's get on to the road. Uh, we'll look into each of these filters, how this performs. I'll meet you all on the road. So right now I'm at Chavlanga Road and I'm recording at a settings that is required to add a cinematic touch to the GoPro footage. So let's put on the filters and let's get riding. So the first uh, filter I'm gonna use is uh, the ND8 and um, just have to put this filter onto the lens just like that and we are good to go so as you can see as soon as i put the filter on the exposure of the video came to normal this is nd8 i'm talking about so this might be still overexposed for the nd8 filter maybe this environment require nd16 or nd32 as well so as you can see uh, the motion blur will be introduced at the corner of the video right So this is ND8 filter. So you guys can see how the video is coming up. So you will be easily noticing the motion blur if you are recording at 24 fps, right? Uh, uh, right now I am recording at uh, 60 fps. So I am gonna stop here and uh, change the filter to ND16. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna keep the camera recording. So I'll ch just change the filter to ND16 now. So there it goes, ND16, I mean ND8. And now comes the ND16. So if you can observe now, uh, the video will be slightly darker. Uh, right now I'm using the ND16 filter. So if you can observe there is a slight difference in the brightness between ND8 and ND16 filters Right I will change the filter to ND32 and let's see how that comes up ND16 and it's 32 make sure the filter is clean both inside out so that there are no dust particles uh, within the filter 
okay now if you can see the video is, is much more darker I've put on ND32 now basically what happens right so now that uh, we have set a certain values towards the lighting settings so GoPro can't adjust itself to the different environmental or different lighting conditions so it's going to be reading perspective of the environment right so what happens is if the environment is too bright the footage will be coming out too brightly or if the environment is too dark the footage will be coming up really dark so you won't be able to uh, handle the exposure so let's head back home let's see how the video quality is coming up So that was about the comparison of footage with the different ND filters on. Yeah, coming to the tip I wanted to share is, so if you guys still think that the video is overexposed, so what you guys can do is you can reduce the ISO max. So I have asked you to set ISO max to 800, right? So what you guys can do is you can reduce the number. You can reduce it to 400 or even 200, uh, depending upon the environmental conditions that you are in. That is the tip I wanted to share. Do let me know down in the comments below if the settings that I have provided is working for you guys. I'll be happy to know that it's working for you. So that's about the ND filters. If you guys think I have explained the ND filters in a very simple words, please like the video so that uh, this video reaches to most number of people who are looking for the information about ND filters and also subscribe to the channel. It will keep on motivating me to make such videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.